Hey, what's up? I'm Kyla Murphy and I'm a full-time wedding filmmaker and photographer here in the Pacific Northwest. And I'm so excited to finally be releasing my first ever color grading tutorial and how exactly I turn my footage from this into this. So go ahead and get your pen and paper ready. I don't want to waste any more of your time and let's do this. All right, what's going on? So we are in DaVinci Resolve 16, of course, in the color module today because we're going to be doing all things color grading with the Blackmagic RAW footage. Um, absolutely love this camera and seriously appreciate all your guys' positive feedback and vibes uh, towards my work. Honestly, it's very humbling and I really do much, uh, if I could talk, <laughs> I really do appreciate it. Um, so this is just gonna be off the cuff today, um, essentially live, you know, just a rough cut of me editing um, one of my uh, clips. This is actually a recent shoot that I was on a couple week, weeks ago on the Oregon coast. Um, and this was shot in the Q5 setting of Blackmagic RAW on the 6K and Sigma 18 to 35 with the black ProMist filter of 1 8th to give you a little behind the scenes of gear that I use. Um, as, as you can see here in the bottom right hand corner of the scopes, we have a lot of push and pull that we can use in the image. So this is gonna be great. Um, just to walk you through my color grading process and all of that. Um, one last thing uh, to preface, I'm assuming that you already kind of know the ins and outs of DaVinci Resolve or know where things are, so I'm not gonna really clarify tons of that too much. Um, there's obviously some great tutorials out there, at, even on DaVinci Resolve's website, going over this panel in a lot more depth than I'm going to do today, um, but this is gonna specifically apply to my process. So. Um, with that said, this is a process that works really well for me and my work and uh, my business. I would just like to preface that. Um, for me, you're not gonna notice that I do a lot of global adjustments. I really don't do in, a lot in terms of keyframing, like skin tones and um, selecting different parts of the image. Uh, you know, it, it, I think it definitely has its time and place, but at the same time, I have to balance out, you know, getting a great quality image and look um, but also managing my time really efficiently as well. So um, with that said, let's dive into this thing. So uh, first things first, in the interest of time, I really wanna make this efficient for you guys and really get the most out of it. So I've already put together my standard node structure that I do on every one of my um, recent films that I put out and some of the grades that you guys have seen online. As you can see, it's essentially an eight step process, okay? So we're gonna start off with our no noise reduction, which is NR. We're gonna then jump into our exposure and how to properly expose the image. We're gonna then go into WB, which stands for white balance and essentially just leveling out our image and just overall giving it a very clean look before we actually start applying some of our coloring and the overall split toning or look um, and vibe to our, um, our clip. Uh, as you can see here, we're gonna go into our color node. Uh, you're gonna see me apply a LUT in this node, which uh, is specifically touches on the HSL, which I'll, I'll go into a little bit deeper later. Then we're gonna apply our look and overall get the image or a vibe of our image. And then uh, we're gonna apply sharpness and a little bit of foam grain and we'll be good to go. All right, so let's do this. So uh, we have our image here. We're gonna first start off in our first node and go into noise reduction. If you don't know where noise reduction is, it's down here in the bottom right hand corner of this icon. Uh, I'm gonna select three frames. Um, so it gets a sample of essentially three frames. I'm gonna go into the just faster, keep it at medium. And I'm gonna zoom in here and hopefully you guys can see what's going on here. Normally, I'll be honest with you, I would not apply really noise reduction on this clip. I think it's already really clean, but just so you can see um, a difference and a little goes a long way. I mean, putting this at like seven or eight is more than enough uh, for like 90% of the clips out there. But you can see it really does overall um, clean up some of that noise um, that's, that's in there. So um, that would always be my first node, noise reduction. And the reason why it is my first node, just so it gets the cleanest signal or the software gets the cleanest signal to the image before doing any sort of your exposure adjustments or your color, um, I just find personally that I get better results um, using the noise reduction on their, the first note. So um, that's what I do. Uh, so then moving on to the second note here, we're going to work on our exposure. So we're gonna go back to our color wheels, which bottom left-hand corner, this icon right here. And the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to adjust my contrast, okay? 
So I'm gonna bring this up probably to about 1.3, somewhere around there. That seems to be the sweet spot uh, for black magic uh, footage. And you're probably wondering, okay, like how do I know if I push contrast too far or it's not enough? Um, you wanna look at the dark parts of the image and the highlights or what's existing in her, um, in her skin tone. So, um, you know, if I push it up to like 1.5, you can see here, it's like, whoa, like the highlights are really bright here. And this is just too dark um, where, where we haven't even adjusted our color wheels yet. And there's, there's just too much contrast in the image. So let's pull this back. We're gonna put it right around like 1.3. Um, and I'm gonna adjust my pivot just a little bit. Um, and the pivot just kind of adjusts where you're seeing that, um, that contrast in the image. And I think that's a really good spot, okay? My second step is I'm gonna increase my saturation like quite a freaking bit, okay? And you're probably want, like, yo, like, Calum, this is crazy, man. We got greens over here. This is like way too much contrast. And just bear with me, all right? Uh, we can, there's definitely a method of the madness. Um, so with this, the reason why I crank this up so much is just so I can see the colors and what's, what exactly is going on in the image. And it's a lot easier for me to see problem areas like the, in the dress, the whites, if there's any sort of funky color in there that I need to get out or also in her skin. So we just crank this up. We're always able to dial it back later. All right. Um, the next is going, we're going to start diving into our lift gamma and gain. Okay. So the gamma. I'm gonna start lifting up, and this is lives a lot more in the skin tones and uh, just that that area, and then I'm gonna start bringing my lift down, all right? And while I'm bringing my lift down, I'm really paying attention to my scopes in the bottom right-hand corner and really making sure that none of these are touching, right? It's just flirting with the bottom, I like to say. Like, it's not touching, but they're, they're kind of, you know, they're, they're knocking on the door, all right? I'm gonna go back to my gamma, and I'm gonna lift this up just a little bit more again. And then I'm gonna bring my my lift back down. And I think I like it right about there. And you know, a big thing with this, with lift gamma gain is it's so much a push and pull, right? So, you know, adjust one and then adjust another one. And then go back and you might need to adjust a little bit more. Like that's okay. Don't feel like these color wheels are something where you need to just like set it and forget it. Like it's very much again, like a push and pull until you get that look that you want, all right? Um, so here we're looking great on the scopes, still got a little bit more room. Um, she's looking great, and you can see just in one node, and we literally did like four steps. Look at that, I mean, night and day different and crazy. So uh, third node here, we're gonna go into white balance, and I'm gonna go into my clip, and I'm gonna adjust this a little bit. I might make this like 5,500 Kelvin, Kelvin if I could talk. And the tint's gonna be a little bit higher. Um, reason being is because of the, on this clip specifically, is just because you can see there's a lot of green that she's surrounded by. So when that light actually reflects off, it's, it's gonna give a lot more of a green uh, tint to the clip or the image. And so I know to offset that, I'm gonna have to have more magenta in my image. So from here, I'm gonna go into my offset um, which is in the color wheels, I'm gonna just bump this up just very slightly, um, like almost towards like that blue, um, like a little bit to the blue magenta side. And I'm gonna keep it just right there. It's very subtle. And the big reason why I have this node as a separate node is just so before I start doing my coloring and my look adjustments, I have like basically a blank canvas. It's well exposed. There's some color in there, and now I can start applying my look, all right? So what I touched on earlier in this color node, I have a LUT that I use, um, which essentially is an HSL type LUT, or hue, saturation, and luminance. And you're like, if, for those of you that are not aware of hue, saturation, and luminance, it's going to exist in this curve section down here in these three nodes, all right? So essentially this LUT is just doing a push and pull of some of these colors, um, to get more so the look that I want. Um, and this, again, this is pure aesthetic choice. You don't have to follow this, but um, that's all that the LUT is doing. It's not doing anything in terms of exposure or white balance or anything like that. It's just adjusting the colors um, a little bit in the image, all right? Then I'm gonna go to my look. And um, now we're going to go back to our color wheels and we're gonna go to our gamma and I'm gonna just bump this up 
just a little bit. And I'm gonna bump it up towards the reds and the magenta area, just because this was more at sunset, it kind of gives, uh, emphasizes that vibe a little bit. And a big thing too, it's taking out this blue sting that I'm seeing in these rocks. And so you can see just by lifting up that gamma, the before and after as I bring it back and forth, it just, it just overall gives the image just a much warmer, uh, realistic look to it, I feel like. And so to balance that out, I'm gonna go to my gain and I'm gonna bring this down um, just a little bit and uh, look at it here, that looks great. Um, and you can see it just takes out some of the, the warmness in her skin a little bit. Um, it, it makes the whites just really pop. I mean, that dress is just popping. That's what I like to see. Um, and overall, this is looking really, really good. Uh, the final thing that I'll do is some polish in my look adjustment as I'll bring my mid-tone detail down. This is like honestly one of my favorite freaking features in Dissolve. Um, and I'll probably bring it down to about mm, like minus 25, minus 30 seems to be like a good sweet spot. And you can just see it just really softens out those highlights like on her arm and on her face. And I mean, she just like her skin is just glowing dreamy. I mean, that's that's what you want. I mean, she looks great. Um, moving on here. So the last step that I'll do in the look adjustment is usually this is where I'll tone down the saturation. So I might bring this down. Looks like eh, maybe just a hair here. Um, maybe right about maybe right about there. All right, that seems like a good a good spot just to take some of that that sting out. Her skin's still still vibrant, and let's just say like you know I, I bring the saturation down, and I'm like you know I think her skin could be a little bit more like punchy. I could go back in here, and we're gonna go to our curve section. It's the third dot hue versus saturation. I'm gonna press on this red right here, and I'm gonna go down to saturation in this bottom right hand corner down here. And I'm just gonna bump this up just ever so slightly. Again, a little goes a long way in DaVinci Resolve. Like literally look at this, like 0 0.4, 0 0.5. And it just brings a little bit more life in her image, but it, it kind of settles out the background. And so it focuses your attention on her. It just, boom, it just goes right to her. Um, so I think that's, that's our look right there. Before, after before, after, big difference there. We're gonna go to our sharpening node. I know there's a lot of different ways to sharpen the image. For me personally, I think this works great. I mean, there's some more technical ways you could do it, but um, I personally just go into the radius. I bring this down maybe to like 0 0.48, 0 0.47. Again, really not a lot, a little goes a long way. Um, and that's just overall just gonna give that kind of crispness back to the image, especially like around her eyes. Um, and help balance out that mid-tone detail effect. And then finally, we got our grain. So I'm gonna go to op open up effects. Um, actually, I have my favorite selected. So just if you guys don't know where foam grain is, um, it's down here towards the bottom in the effects features. And we're gonna drag and drop that. We're gonna select 35 millimeter 400T. And I usually like bumping this up to like 0.6, seems like a good spot. Uh, for the opacity and we are good to go. And this, this is our image, y'all. This is it. Um, let me go full screen for a second. You take it in. Um, but yeah, I mean, you look at, I mean, she looks great. Skin looks good, soft. I mean, the Blackmagic camera is just amazing. Um, I never get sick of using this camera. And um, let's just do a little before and after here. We'll go back full screen. This was before. And this was after, before, after. So, you know, hopefully this shows you that, yes, I could have a much more probably complex node tree and start keying the skin tones and everything else and going a lot more in depth. But again, you know, will it make the image a little bit better? Absolutely, 100%. But for me, this is more than acceptable, um, at least for the work that I do, and I just really love the look that I get out of it. Hopefully you guys do too. Um, feel free to comment below any questions that you have, um, things that you uh, liked about this video, things that you felt like were missing or I could improve on. Um, I love the feedback, but hopefully there is a few good takeaways um, or some learning opportunities for you. And last of all, please like this video. Um, subscribe if you definitely want to see more color grading tutorials in the future. And uh, seriously, thank you guys so much for watching and until the next one.